Hey guys, this is my review of the iPhone 13 Pro. The microphone in this review is pretty bad for the first half, but after that it gets better. Sorry about that. The iPhone 13 Pro is not an S year upgrade. It's a full redesign in my opinion. The differences here are substantial. I've been using this iPhone 13 Pro since early October, and here is my full review. The first thing I want to note about this phone is that I upgraded from a 12 Pro Max. I frequently use my 12 mini though due to its lighter form factor. The only question I got asked about it was if the battery was a problem. It wasn't. I'm always near some sort of an outlet, and if I won't be, my MagSafe battery pack is always ready to be used, so the 12 mini battery life was fine to me. After about 2 months of using the 12 mini, my battery health dropped to 99%, with no noticeable decrease in battery life. But with that said, the 13 Pro can easily last me a day, but I tend to use the 13 Pro more than the 12 mini because of its amazing experience. 120Hz is something I didn't know I wanted on a phone before, but now it's stopping me from buying any phone without it in the future. I will always go for 120Hz on a device now, even though in the past I didn't like high frame rate displays. Part of this is due to how good the OLED quality is. Another upgrade I like about the new display is the brightness. It now goes about 20% brighter, but it frequently downclocks the brightness due to heat concerns. I wish this could be disabled, but what can you do? The new notch offers a much better experience than you'd expect. It's smaller, but deeper. When you're watching videos with black bars on the sides, it now makes me feel like this is an actual edge-to-edge -edge display, since there's no speaker in the middle of the notch. Even though Apple still refuses to give us battery percentage info in the notch, I'm happy with this new notch. I also see less burn-in on this display after a month of use than my 12 Pro Max did. Not that the 12 Pro Max had a lot, but the time in the 5G logo burnt into my iPhone 12 Pro Max and 12 mini. I also like the new A15 chip. It seems like now more things stay open in the background of the phone, even though it still has the same 6GB of RAM as the previous generation iPhones. It's also more efficient, meaning you can now have longer battery life. Battery isn't an issue to me, but this chip stays cooler than the A13, but still it heats up under any real load. The A15 is truly an amazing chip, and Apple definitely knows what they're doing when it comes to mobile chipsets. I charge my phone around 150% a day. That's because now that I have this phone, I use my phone more and my computer less. The battery life on this phone can last me anywhere from 5 to 9 hours, depending on 5G use, brightness, etc. The battery on this phone isn't any concern of mine since I'm always near a charger, but it's nice to not have to always bring my MagSafe battery pack if I have to go somewhere and I have less than 40% battery. So I upgraded from the iPhone 12 Pro Max, not because I think the average consumer should upgrade, but because I'm a tech guy and I really like my iPhones, but I think the average consumer would probably really like this. I think even over an iPhone 12 series upgrade, this is a complete upgrade for anyone in my opinion. It's not the same phone rebranded, it's a complete different phone. The cameras are the biggest change over anything else next to the display, and I haven't even got into that yet. A couple of minor yet notable things I've noticed about the 13 Pro are the better LiDAR camera, which seems to more accurately measure things, the louder speakers, which was a complaint I had about my previous iPhones, for whatever reason it also charges faster, even though it's still limited to 20 watts, which there is of course no charge adapter included in the box and better Bluetooth communication. I also see this iPhone standing on 5G UC more than my 12 mini did. Now, before we get into cameras, I want to say something about iOS. We still have normal iOS, no major changes. iOS 15 brings a redesigned Do Not Disturb mode, never used by me personally, new widgets, which are nice, and a couple other small things. But most notably for me is the amount of freezing and crashing. I've had so many issues with this version of iOS compared to iOS 13 and 14. iOS 13 was horrible for me, and worse than iOS 15, but for such a small update, it should be stable. iOS 11 was considered unstable, iOS 13 was considered unstable, and now iOS 15 will be? Apple, please fix your OS. Every two years, it gets terrible again. Now. For the cameras. The cameras on this phone are the best I've ever saw from a phone. 
It's the first time I've actually cared about a phone camera since 2016 with the iPhone 7 Plus. The camera is way clearer than the 12 series. The video quality is amazing. 4K at 60fps takes up way too much space, but it's worth it for the quality you get. The past month, I've been recording all of my videos on the iPhone 13 Pro instead of my dedicated Sony a7 II camera, and it's actually done a better job. The camera module is massive, though it takes up way too much space on the back of the phone, and it pops out way too much. My Mouse Limitless 4.0 solves this issue by making the camera bump even bigger. The cinematic mode hardly ever works correctly. Oftentimes, the edges are feathered and messed up. You need to edit with either iMovie or Final Cut Pro 10 with macOS Monterey, if you don't want to convert this and deal with the HDR, that is. The camera's photos are amazing, and a recent update to iOS 15.1 adds ProRes RAW video support. One note about ProRes RAW video support is that you need a 256GB or higher iPhone to support um, 4K footage. The macro camera shots are absolutely amazing, even though it has a glitch where it switches to the macro camera mode when you don't want it to, which was actually fixed in iOS 15.1. One thing that people have complained about, however, is lack of zoom. I don't think this is a problem. A fully zoomed in shot on an S21 Ultra looks terrible. So will it on any phone. Three times is already more zoom than I'd want to use to keep quality, and I absolutely don't want to go past 10 times zoom. And of course, this phone has the most overrated feature in a phone, 5G. It's still 5G. It's a way to pretty much get slightly faster speeds, of course, 5G will improve over the times, but for the time being, don't buy a phone based on if it has 5G or not. It has Wi-Fi 6, which is still amazing to me, and it still supports LTE, of course, for those who don't want to use 5G. If you need longer battery life, disable 5G, and you'll see about a 30-60% to 60 battery increase, depending on how much you use 5G. This iPhone also has the things that the tech people call annoying. Face ID doesn't work with masks, and as many states require people to use masks, this could be annoying. If you have an Apple Watch, this isn't an issue since you could use Proximity Unlock with Apple Watch. It has Lightning, which I personally like, but it is still stuck on USB 2.0 transfer speeds. And if you travel a lot, as any tech YouTube channel loves to tell you, you're gonna need to have to bring multiple cables. But... If you've had iPhones in the past, you won't have to get any new cables, since the lightning has been the same for years. I still wish this phone supported faster charging, but it's still faster than any iPhone before 2017, which used 10 watt charging. Yes, there's no charge brick included in the box. Does it matter? No. People would use a good charge brick if it was included, but nobody used the 5 watt charge brick and they just threw it out from the iPhone 3G to the iPhone 11 because it was a horrible, slow, and annoying charger. That's all that I will say on that matter. This iPhone still has the same general design as the 12 Pro, with a bigger camera. I still don't particularly like the squared edges, but they don't annoy me as much as they did on the 12 Pro. The 6.1 inch display also doesn't annoy me anymore. For the time I had the 12 Pro, the display would constantly be an issue since the keyboard was much too narrow and the edges were squared. It was harder for me to press the edge keys, that being Q, A, Z, and the other side. But now I feel fine typing on this phone. I guess I've just gotten used to it easier on this one for whatever reason, even though it's the same size of a phone and all your previous Screen protectors may work, and your cases will not. I've made a whole video on that matter. I think this phone will be the best iPhone I've ever had, but that's only for time to tell. I wasn't sure if I'd like the Sierra Blue option, as when I got Pacific Blue on my 12 Pro, I didn't like it. But I actually like it. I've preferred gold on iPhones for a number of years, ever since they came out actually, but this color is much nicer to look at than my 12 Pro Max is gold. The only color I specifically didn't like was graphite, but after seeing my dad's graphite iPhone 13 Pro, I think it's a decent color. It's also proven to be less durable in durability tests, likely due to its weight increase, but I've never thought that ceramic shield was that helpful anyway. Now with all that said, do I recommend the iPhone 13 Pro? Yes. I think this is an amazing phone that anybody would love to use. I think that this phone will serve most people very well. Now, we can't be sure if this is going to be an amazing phone because 
it's all possible that this could have so many defects in the future, but right now, I'd recommend buying it. And it's just such an amazing phone to use. I love it. Um, this is definitely one of the best iPhones I've had so far. But, yeah. I worked pretty hard on this video, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And maybe subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. So, with that said, thank you for watching. Goodbye.